one of the absolute deepest, most important things that we can learn about our psyche is that we are not our thoughts and we are not our emotions. Those things come and go. Our thoughts come and go. Our opinions, they change. Emotions, they come and go. They change. They are not what is consistent. They are not who we are. Who we really are at our core self is pure awareness. That is all we are. At least what we can tell to the best of our ability. We are pure awareness. And the way that we learn this is we take a second and we step back from our thoughts and emotions. We just take a second and we quiet ourselves and we close our eyes and we look inside of our brain. If you take a second to observe the inside of your brain and watch for the first thought to come into your brain. Watch for the first thought that comes into your brain. You realize that you are not your thoughts. You are watching your thoughts. Who are you? That's the most important, relevant question to our existence. Other than how are we going to survive? Because the number one rule of nature is the law of self-preservation. But my point here is as far as self-exploration and knowing who you are, you have to be able to not be your thoughts, not be your emotions. So emotions, they come and they go and they usually springboard from thoughts, right? Thoughts, they change, they vary your opinions on certain things. And because maybe you had a negative thought, you had an, a negative emotion that would follow you around. But then you learn something that you didn't know before. Like, oh, Sally didn't really mean what I thought she meant. So now because I've learned that new detail, that emotion doesn't follow me around like it used to, you know? So, what it all comes down to is energy and vibration. That's all it is. Everything is energy and vibration. Your emotions and your thoughts. All of existence is interconnected. The only difference between a thought or a feeling and a rock is the density. That's the only difference. The rock is basically the same thing that a thought or a feeling is. It's just a denser manifestation that's all and if you can figure this out and that's where the concept of the level the tool the masonic tool the level means so much to me because to me the level indicates being level a level is in the middle right it tells you when you are centered it tells you when you're balanced and when you're in the center it means you're neutral okay you're not leaning one way or the other. You are simply what you are. And you're not attaching yourself to any emotions or thoughts or concepts. You're simply in the moment. This is why a lot of... Uh, this, is, this is what really, um, technically, if you want to get down to it, what really um, in, entices people about doing extreme sports and activities is because... it puts them in the present moment it takes them out of their thoughts and it brings them into reality if you can get into reality that's where it's at because that's what's real right what's actually going on some people you know for example somebody could be sitting in a luxurious mansion right miles and miles away from people but maybe they're worried about getting physically um, assaulted when they go out somewhere, right? 
but when in reality they're completely safe they're stressed out with emotion because of thought they're in here and not only that but their thought is based outside of the present moment right they are imagining something that might happen in the future and the future is not here yet the future is not real and when they think of the future, when we think of the future, we think of it from right here, right now. And when we think of the past, we think of the past from right here and right now. Right now is the eternal present. And I say eternal because eternal means no beginning and no end. It goes both ways. The beginning and the end. This is the Christ, right? The present moment. The Alpha and the Omega. So, if you can anchor yourself in reality, in the present moment, you come into contact with your Christ, your inner Christ. You become the Alpha and Omega when you realize this. But, anyways, let's take just a quick uh, gander at the uh, Kabbalion, however you like to pronounce it. Kabbalion, Kabbalion. Here's the important thing uh, that we need to remember and take note of. It's in chapter 9, um, and it is on the chapter in regards to vibration. And here's my favorite point. It's at the very end of this chapter, and it says, As one of the old Hermetic writers has truly said, quote, He who understands the principle of vibration has grasped the scepter of of power and that's it that is truly it so when you know what is real and what is not is not real and that everything is just a variation of the one and that you get to determine which way you lean you are the creator you are the manifester So my encouragement to you is to stay on the level, right? Stay on the level. And the only time that you need to move from the level and step into the fictional realm is when you want to create something. And then what does it come back to? Consciously creating, right? We want to be conscious creators. And that's part of the point, the whole point of gaining the knowledge and the information is so that you aren't just creating out of habit or just unconscious creation. You aren't creating from emotion. You're creating from intent. You're intellectually deciding what you want to create. You're taking the, the will you're at the helm, right? You're the creator. You're the master. You're the God of yourself. You govern yourself. That is part of why on one of my shirts, some of you might have noticed I have a brand I'm trying to uh, play around with. Govern thyself wisely, right? That's what it's about. It's about self-knowledge, self-governing, and doing it wisely. Knowing who you are, what you are. Knowing the human psyche. And utilizing it to your advantage and your ability. Creating a peaceful, productive life. Creating a better self. All things that are lovely, pure, and virtuous. Right? Also remembering, though, just because you're into spirituality doesn't mean that you have to let people run over top of you or to hurt you or harm you. That's why I represent the three percenter sign because I am an avid Second Amendment supporter. And I don't think anybody has the right to say whether or not any human being cannot defend themselves with a firearm. You look on the front. What's the skull? The skull is a reminder of our mortality. 
that we need to act now. We can't put our improvement off. We can't put our better self off. We can't put our knowledge and learning off. We have a limited time to do the things we want to do on this earth. That's what the skull is for. It's a reminder of your mortality. And here, obviously, the Philosopher's Stone, right? If you want to know what that's about, go look it up. There's a lot of information on that. You basically have all of the major symbols right there. And you can ponder on that symbol right there. And you can get yourself a sermon, a mental sermon. And you can learn from it and grow from it. And, and it will be a tool to help you think about life in its many perspectives. This right here. Milk for babes. Strong meat for men. The truth is not easy for everybody. But it's there if you're ready for it. The sprig of acacia. All Masons know about this. This is a symbol of immortality. There's something more. There's a divine intelligence. What is it? I don't know. I'm not going to pretend I know and tell you that it's some man in the sky with a beard. Because I definitely do not subscribe to that dogma. Down here... Hard work and violence. Let's be real. This country was founded on hard work and violence. Right? That is the American religion. Self-betterment, self-improvement, growing, moving forward, progressing, development. That's American religion. Hard work and violence. Violence comes in many forms. It does not have to be an assault on somebody. Violence can be the changing of a condition in your life. Any kind of aggressive action can be deemed as violence. And I admonish everybody to perform some kind of violence in their daily lives towards a better life. Let's talk about... This one here, this design. These shirts are meant to make you think. These are deep shirts. This is not just some patriotic wear. This is self-development, self-improvement, self-betterment. American religion, hard work and violence. Remember, American religion is about a way of existence. It's the new world. Do you like Western occult? Well, where do you think it happened? Where do you think it all went down? Why do they call it Western occult? Because here in America, when we had the freedom to choose what we wanted to believe or what we didn't want to believe, the Renaissance took place. And when the Renaissance took place, guess what we was able to do here in America? Mix a smorgasbord of ideas together and exchange ideas and concepts, different practices and beliefs, superstitions and dogmas and philosophical practices. And we were able to, as Americans, extract what we wanted, what we found to actually work for each of us in our own personal lives and not have to be told what to believe or what to think. Let's talk about this right here. A reminder of your mortality. The sword. You see, that's a curved sword. It's a wavy sword. It's supposed to resemble a flame for those who go to the lodge they know all about the sword they know what it means this is a representation of a flaming sword the flaming sword sword stood guard over the mind at the door that's why it says guard the door lest ye perish we got to guard the door the door to the mind what we allow in the conscious and the subconscious we were talking about making conscious decisions right the conscious mind allows things into the subconscious mind in order to manifest right we decide it's up to us so guard the door do not let garbage into your mind educate yourself about what you let into your mind because it will go into your subconscious whether you like it or not 
So guard the door with the flaming sword that was set in the center of the garden of Eden. The garden of Eden being the mind in its perfect state. It's pure, wholesome state, right? Once again, on the back, the three percenter logo. The West is the best. You're damn right it is.